It's almost time to start. So turn around and say hello. Hello. It's almost time to start. So turn around and say hello. Hello. It's almost time to start. So turn around and say hello. Hello. It's almost time to start. So turn around and say hello. Hello. It's time to start. So jump up high. It's time to start. Spin around. It's time to start. So jump up high. It's time to start. Spin around. It's almost time to start. So turn around and say hello. Hello. It's almost time to start. So turn around and say hello. Hello. It's almost time to start. So turn around and say hello. Hello. It's almost time to start. So turn around and say hello. Hello. Everybody dance. It's almost time to start. So turn around and yell hello. hello. It's almost time to start. So turn around and yell hello. hello. It's almost time to start. So turn around and yell hello. hello. It's almost time to start. So turn around and yell hello. hello. It's time to start. Everybody sit down. Oh yeah. And I'm <gasps> Doug. <gasps> Welcome to VCC Kids. We are so glad you're here today. Right, Cotton? Me? Uh, yes, because we're here to have fun and discover Jesus together. That's right. Yeah. It's gonna be great. Now I know we're all comfy on our couches at home right now, right. but it's time to shout out our four truths that remind us about who God is and what he has done for us. <gasps> Yes, that's the spirit, Cotton. Come on, everybody. Stand up and get excited. Here we go! Three, two, one. God is good to me. Jesus has forgiven me. Good job, everybody. That was awesome. Go ahead and take a seat. Those things we shouted out are more than just words. <gasps> more than words? What are they then? Yeah, they are truths from God that we can always remember. We can hold them in our hearts to remind us every single day that God loves us and is always with us. Oh, that's nice. All right, next, let's check in with our friends to see what we're learning about today. <laughs> okay. Hey kids, my name is Tiffany and this is my friend Braggy Frog and I am so glad that you are here today. Yes, yes, I am also glad that I'm here too. You are very welcome. I, Braggy Frog, I meant that I'm glad the kids are here today. Oh, yes, of course. Well, uh, anyways, today we're learning about... Uh, Tiffany, tell the kids what we're learning about today. Well, we know that God created us to worship Him. Ah, uh, yes, worship is good. I know all about worship because, you know, I know all about everything. So then, Braggy Frog, you already know that worship is about more than dancing and singing about how great God is. Worship is about our hearts. God asks us to worship Him with our whole heart and with our whole life. Oh, yes, yes, yes. My, my, my life is full of worship. Tiffany, pretty much overflowing with worship. That's great, Braggy Frog. Kids, we worship God with our whole life by putting Him first in our heart and making Him the most important thing in our life. Oh, well, yes, of course, uh, except for me. Uh, what? Well, I'm the most important. I'm the best, and everyone knows that. Braggy Frog, right, actually, right. God is the only one who is worthy of our worship. He is our good father. He is the creator of the entire universe. He gets to be the number one most important thing in our lives. 
More than anything else? More than anything or anyone. You know what? There is a short little story in the Bible, God's Word, that kind of talks about this. I think it can help explain. Do you want to hear it? Hmm. I mean, I already know everything, but uh, sure, sure, you can um, read it for the children. In Mark chapter 10, there's a story of the rich young ruler. Wait. Rich? Ruler? I think I really like this story. Go on. Well, the rich young ruler saw Jesus passing by and ran up to him. And he asked, good teacher, what must I do so that I can live with God forever? Jesus told the man to follow everything he had taught him. And then Jesus looked at the man and knew his heart. And he lovingly said, there is one more thing you need to do. He said, sell everything you have and give it to the poor. Wait, everything? I mean like his car? and his house and, and his yacht that has, that has five PlayStations on it? Yes, everything. You see, it says, Jesus knew that the man had made his stuff number one in his heart instead of God. And so for the man to live the life of worship that God invites us to, Jesus knew that the man needed to get rid of all of his stuff. But, 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 what, what did he do? What did the man do? Well, Braggy Frog, it says that this was the last thing the rich young ruler expected Jesus to say to him. Of course. He loved all of his possessions so much, he decided that he didn't want to stop worshiping his stuff to worship God. So he walked away from Jesus. But, but just thinking of, of getting rid of my, my yacht with my golden water slide, I just couldn't. How could Jesus ask that man to do such a thing? <gasps> well, Marky Frog, Jesus knew what this man was created for. Like all of us, he was created to worship and walk through life with God. But instead of worshiping God, he was worshiping his possessions. So Jesus invited him to stop focusing on his stuff and instead focus on the life of worship God created him for. Mm. And the man chose not to. He did. He decided that he didn't want to make God or Jesus first in his life. He decided that he didn't want the best life of worship that God created him for. So he walked away. You see, God loves all of us so much. He wants us to love him, to worship him, and to do life with him, but he doesn't force us to. We get to decide. We get to choose to live our life by putting him first and worship him with our whole heart and with our whole life. Oh, yes, 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 that's right. Of course, nobody forces me to do anything. I am the best worshiper ever because God is my best friend and I know that he loves me the most and that is why I want to worship him. Well, yes, God loves all of us so much, Braggy Frog. You know what? How about we decide to choose to spend time right now worshiping God by dancing and singing about how great He is. He is the only one worthy of our praise and attention. He is the only one worthy of being number one. So kids, how about you go ahead and stand up? Oh, I bet you guys can't sing louder or dance better than me. We'll see about that, Braggy Frog. Kids, let's worship. Temple being thrown on the sound of our praise. 
Jesus was with us the whole time! Okay, now everybody, let's get settled. It's time to see what else our friends are teaching us about today. Hey guys, my name is Brian and I am so glad that you're here today. We are learning that we were created to worship God with our whole life. God is the only one who gets to be number one in our heart. And today I have a Bible story for you uh, about a guy named Daniel who lived out that truth so well. What's happening? HQ, I found the suspect. Uh, hello there, citizen. Hello. Do not be alarmed. This is just an investigation. I'm CIA, FBI, secret agent detective, Brad McPherson. Brad McPherson, CIA, FBI, secret agent detective. Oh, uh, well, my name is Brian, and I was just in the middle of actually telling these- Well, Brian, if that is your real name, I have some questions for you. It's definitely my real name. Uh, okay. Uh, well, I'm working on a super important case, Brian. Okay. And you're gonna tell me everything you know about Daniel. Yeah, you're probably thinking of Daniel from the Bible story that we're actually gonna be reading today. Tough guy, huh? Apparently this Daniel character, he broke the law and he was thrown into a lion's den for dinner. And you know what that means. Oh yeah. But the lions didn't bother him at all. Sounds a bit fishy to me. Yeah, it's actually a really great story and I think we can learn a lot from Daniel about what it looks like to live a life of worship. Do you want to hear it? Hmm. HQ. I'm going in for questioning with this Brain or Brian, whatever his name is, character. I'll be right back. Well, Brain or Brian, I'm ready to hear your story. Well, all right, but before we get started reading our Bible story, let's shout out some truths about the Bible, God's Word. The Bible is God's Word. Great job, everybody. All right, now tell me what you know. Okay, so in the Bible, it says in the book of Daniel, it tells us that a long time ago in a place called Babylon, there was a guy named King Darius. He really respected Daniel and wanted to make him a ruler over everyone. But the other leaders, they were jealous of Daniel and how much King Darius liked him. They tried to find out bad things about him to tell the king, but they couldn't find anything because Daniel, he was a good man. All right, leaders, jealous of Daniel. Daniel had done nothing wrong. Right, keep going. Okay, uh, the leaders knew that Daniel loved God very much and that God was the most important thing in Daniel's life. They knew that no matter what, Daniel was always going to worship God and put him first before anything else. And so they decided to kind of be sneaky and try to use that against Daniel. They actually convinced the king to make a law that said everyone had to bow down and worship King Darius. And anyone who did not do that would be thrown into a lion's den. All right, yeah. so there's the lion, you know, Daniel, king, bow down, God first, lion's den. Okay, good, proceed. Okay. Uh, well, because Daniel loved God and God was the first in his heart, uh, he kept living a life of worship. He prayed to God every single day. He told God how grateful he was for all the good things that God had done in his life. And he asked God to show him what to do in this situation. And the whole time, Daniel did not bow down to the king. The whole time he kept living in relationship with God. Daniel knew that no matter what, only God was worthy of his worship. Okay, so Daniel kept worshiping God. Okay, I see where this is going. Okay, yeah. great. Daniel kept worshiping God, and so they threw Daniel into the lion's den. And all night long, the king, he was worried. He knew that he'd made a mistake and that Daniel was a good man. And so he ran to the lion's den first thing to check on Daniel. And do you know what he found? 
Ryan, we're gonna need the evidence bag. Oh, wait. No. I just hope that there's not a whole lot of pieces. I don't think, I don't think we're gonna need that. He, he found Daniel completely unharmed. What? He escaped the terror kitties? Impossible. No, actually, Brett, with God, everything is possible, and God hadn't left Daniel's side the whole time. God saved Daniel. He protected him from the lions all night long so that he didn't get eaten. Everyone was amazed by God's power and how good he is. The king changed the law so that instead of worshiping the king, everyone would worship God. So because Daniel lived a life of worship, mm -hmm. other people started worshiping God too. Yeah, that's right. Daniel worshiped and spread the hope of Jesus by showing other people how amazing and powerful God is. All right, so let me get this straight. Daniel was a good guy. He worshiped God every day. And some guys who didn't like him got him thrown in with the lions. But God saved him and he didn't become lion food. Instead, the lions played nicely with him. Maybe played a bit of fetch with the old pig skin. The next morning, the king changed the law so that everyone would worship God like Daniel. So, technically, Daniel is not a lawbreaker. <laughs> Cracked the case. Done it again, Brett. HQ Daniel is not a lawbreaker. He is a worshiper. Case officially closed. But wait, Brian, what about the men who were trying to get Daniel in trouble? Where are they? Well, actually, the Bible says that those same men, King Darius, they had, he had them thrown in the exact same lion's den. So the lions brought those men to justice. Good. You know what, Brian? I think I could use those lions on my team. We'll be an unstoppable force. I've gotta go find them. I'll see you next time. Smoke bomb! Okay, see you, Brett. Well, kids, Daniel lived a life of worship, and so can you. He chose to worship God because he knew no matter what, God is good, and he was the only one who is worthy of our worship. He's the only one who gets to be number one in our hearts. Matthew 22, verse 35 to 37 says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest commandment. And when we love God with all our heart, we will live a life of worship, the life that God created for us. Okay, well, that's all we have for today, so we will see you next time. Bye. Hey, everybody, what's inside the old lunch sack? Hey, everybody, let's take a look in the old lunch sack. There's apple juice, chocolate mousse, potato chip, chicken strip, yogurt lid, fried squid, dental floss, pesto sauce, chitza guac, cheese block, butter toast, turkey roast, churro dust, pizza crust. That's what's inside. Let's see. Hey kids, my name is Dominic. And I'm Dolores. Welcome to the old lunch sack where we take a bite out of the lesson we just heard and talk about it together. Yeah, today we learned about worship and we heard a story about a guy named Daniel. And Dominic and I have a few questions for you. Are you ready? Let's see what they are. Question number one, who gets to be number one in our hearts? Question number two, how did Daniel live a life of worship? Okay, now it's time for you to answer those questions at home. You can talk about them with your parents, your aunt. Your uncle, your cousin. Your sister, your turtle, your pet raccoon. Your brother, your stuffed animals, or whoever is at home with you. Okay, now get talking and press pause on your screen in three, two, one. Okay, well that's all of our questions for today. All this talking is making me hungry. Time for a snack. Oh, yeah. Maybe some cheese? We'll see you later, kids. Bye. That was great. So great. I hope you all got to talk about that with someone at home. I'm so glad you got to join us today. We have one last thing to do together. <gasps> Only one last?
this thing? Oh no! But I'm having so much fun! Me too, Cotton. <gasps> We're gonna end our time with one last song that reminds us about who God is and what he has done for us. Ah, come on kids, more singing, more dancing, more fun! Ah, ah. All right, here we go. We're so glad that you came. We had lots of fun together. All right, that's all we have for today. I'm so glad you joined us. Be sure to check out the links below for a coloring page and activity guide so that you can keep having fun and discovering Jesus at home. Yeah, and kids, make sure to tell your parents to hit the subscribe button so you can know every single time we post a new video. And we would also love for your parents to join the VCC Kids Parent Facebook group. You can search for it on Facebook or find them in the links below. We'll see you guys later. Bye. <laughs>